Hey everybody, it's me Margaret. I'm back. I think it's been a month since I last popped in here in YouTube land and I'm really happy to say that I've been busy and productive. Busy so much that I haven't been able to do videos or at least they've been low on the totem pole when it comes to the list of priorities. However, I've also been productive and some of the things I can't tell you about but you'll know soon. You'll know in January actually, but we'll talk about that in another day. What else have I been doing? How do you like the covers I made for my totes here in the dream box? I think it makes such a huge difference. Now the reason I chose this pattern, well let me back up and tell you what it is. First of all, it's just a piece of paper, a piece of cardstock that you use. Um, I used my silhouette and I cut out all these little files. Now the good thing was that on the Facebook group for the dream box someone had already designed them so all I did was download them and hit send to the printer and boom it just cuts it out for me so that was awesome now the what the reason I chose this pattern was because I had that red twill fabric that I'm going to be using to recover some things in here that's going to be uh, I guess my colors <laughs> I defaulted to that red twill because I already had it. I had it for years. Don't even remember why I bought it in the first place, but it's great fabric. It's a good cotton thick uh, heavyweight fabric. As a matter of fact, I keep looking over here because I have covered my ironing board already. It looks great. The process was simple. I traced around the ironing board, leaving about three inches on all sides, and then I cut it out and made some casings to slide elastic into, and poof, it was done. So I have lots of elastic here that I could use, but this was some that I took out of an old fitted sheet. And it's perfectly good. I mean, it works really, really well, but it's just kind of worn, you know, over time, but it'll be fine for the ironing board cover. So that's free elastic. I really like the way that turned out and so I was so excited when I found this red twill cardstock from scrapbook.com but they didn't have enough of it so I was a little bummed about that that I had to order a blue and white twill but as it turns out I love the fact that it broke up that red and white so lucky me that's one of those happy accidents you know I really like those little covers in the front because it gives a cohesiveness to all my chaos of stuff that I have in there. You'll see when uh, these people that do Dreambox videos, a lot of them will stage it. I'm convinced it has to be staged because everything is just too color coordinated. Like you just happen to have the same amount of paints over here as you do um, threads and markers on this side. I mean, it, it's just too perfect. And I never have taken the time to stage mine for anything. And by the way, I am an ambassador now, so I actually do get a commission on the sale of these things, which I'm celebrating because they kind of ignored me right at the beginning. I don't know what happened. I think my email may have gotten lost or whatever, but they've been super to work with and I'm really excited about that. So I have links in the description box for US, Canada, and Europe, but don't do it yet. Wait until Black Friday because there's going to be a great big sale. Sale for new owners and for already owners. What do you call it? Owners. <laughs> Um, accessories and things like that will be on sale as well. And also, even if you don't want this piece of furniture, go look at the accessories just because they're awesome. Like these things, for example. Um, these are, tw they fit 12 by 12 paper, which is often hard to find. But these things are so neat because they have dividers that you can put in them to either fit everything, you can leave the dividers out and fit long, bulky things right here, or you can have these little divider things to turn it into three sections. Or in the case of these small ones right here, four sections if you want. And it's completely customizable. You can do one long and one short section. You know, it's whatever. But I've filmed a tour of my whole dream box, what's inside, because people always ask me that. What on earth do you have in that big monstrosity? So I have filmed it, but I'm not going to release it until the Black Friday sales because I figure that kind of goes together, right? So um, that'll be coming up here shortly. And I don't think I ever showed you how this shawl came out, or rather scarf. It's a scarf. It's called the Tinder Scarf. The last time I showed it to you, I think I was blocking it, but here it is with the finished product, and I absolutely love it. So pleased with it. You may remember if you watched that video 
video where I talked about it that this yarn was very special to me. Not only is it a very high quality yarn that I bought at Webb's, um, it was, I think it was actually the first really high quality yarn I ever bought a long time ago. I was with Erin, Give Me Yarn 418, one of my favorite friends and who I considered my knitting guru. Uh, she has taught me just about everything I need, I've ever known about knitting. And that makes this yarn a little sentimental. What I had originally chosen this yarn to, for was just something that I found tedious and annoying and I did not do that pattern, but I did find this one and I loved it. I showed you before uh, when I was in the process of making it and this looks like ribbing. It's all pulled in, but you block it out flat so that you can actually see you know, lines and columns rather than stretchy ribs. And I think it's beautiful. I love the colors, I love the shading, I love the feel. It's just a success. And then another thing I did was this little hat. Now I'll have to look up the exact pattern, but I think it, it was really, really cute. I love the little scallop edge right here where the colors meet. And I think I mentioned to you before that I really want to work on my color work. This is called Fair Isle or Stranded Knitting, and I'm not really good at it, to be honest with you. Let's see if you can tell no, let me move this light. The whites are just a little too tight. The stitches are just a little bit too tight. So I need to work on that. You could maybe see it in the, the red ones here in the white. That's my biggest challenge. But then again, I think that's everybody's biggest challenge with stranded knitting. Besides the act of getting your hands going, it's the tension at the color change points that are tricky. Now if you flip it over on the back, on the inside rather, you can see my strands back there. And I did a pretty good job, but I still need to figure out how to loosen those up just a little. This has been washed. It's an acrylic yarn, so it was easy to throw in the washer, throw in the dryer and that usually does a really good job of evening out stitches and uh, obviously it didn't correct the problem so we can't say oh blocking will fix it because it won't so that's okay I know what the problem is I just need to practice and now we got to have a word about knit crate just when I think they can't get any better they surprised me. They have done something that has warmed my heart and I'll tell you about it in just a minute. But first, let me show you this awesome yarn. This is a, let me see, 82% merino wool, 18% Peruvian Pima cotton. So wool and cotton mixed. It's a super bulky and this is 100 grams. It is machine washable. So you just lay it flat to dry and you've got the two skeins of that. It's that URU.yarn. Um, I never have figured out how to say that. Is it URU or is it URU? I, d I don't know. Now, this was October's. And when I opened it up, it only had one of these cards. It didn't have the booklet. But listen to this. Thank you for joining us for the very first month of our eco-friendly membership option. Here's what we're doing to make your crate friendly to our planet. Now notice the word option. If you don't like this, you don't have to, but everybody knows if they've been watching my channel for any length of time that I am big on eco-friendly. This mailer right here, First of all, it's smaller than the box, right? And this happens to be made of biodegradable material. Let's see if it tells us exactly what it is. Um, biodegradable and compostable mailer made of cornstarch. And you do know that we have a glut of corn in this country. It's a long story how that happened to be, but the more we can learn to use corn in other ways, then we can still give the government subsidies to the corn farmers and make use of it. It because we can't even ship it overseas because it ends up spoiling a lot. We do, but a lot of it does spoil in the way. Anyway, I don't want to get off on that. The point is eco-friendly, using cornstarch, helping USA. That's good. This postcard is printed on recycled paper. And down at the bottom corner here on the back that I can't show you is a link. 
and a little QR code over here that you can scan to get the booklet, a downloadable booklet, so you don't have to print it, right? But even if you don't choose this option, they are doing things within the company to offset their carbon footprint. For instance, in October, we're proud to partner with One Tree Planet, a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to global reforestation. And it goes on to explain that entire process, the, the other charitable institutions that are related that it helps and whatever but the point being is they've thought about every aspect of the business trying to reduce their own carbon footprint just like I try to do here in my home and I'm sure you do too so it's wonderful for us to be working together and remember everything that we can do better today than we did yesterday is a step in the right direction. And there are gonna be times when we are creating more trash than we intended, but if we offset it at another time, we're making steps in the right direction. So thank you, Knit Crate, I'm proud of you. So if you are already a Knit Crate, a Knit Crate subscriber, then you can check these options, go into your account and you can make those checks and say, yeah, always send it to me like this or whatever is important to you. And it's worth noting that if you choose the eco-friendly packaging, you save a little money. Eco-friendly packaging is $24.99 a month and then the traditional box is $26.99 a month. Then that makes sense. You know, you pay for what you use. If you really like the way it comes in the traditional box, you can have that, but it does cost them a little bit more money. So I think that's fair. And another thing they're doing, which I think is awesome, people have been kind of complaining, which is really foreign to me because I don't understand this, but everybody's different. They're saying, it comes too often. I don't need new yarn once a month. <laughs> They don't like to build their stash up. Some of us have a stash, what is it called, stable. Stash beyond life expectancy or something like that. Yeah, that's true for the majority of us yarn lovers, but there are a lot more practical people who do not want to have this much yarn every month delivered because they can't use it up that quickly. And so, and it was great listen, and so they're making this option where you can go in and adjust the frequency um, of how often you receive it. Apparently it's completely customizable. One month to every two, every three or six or whatever. If you're going on vacation, you can pause it. So it gives you so much more control. So I thought that was a good point. Can you tell I'm a Dick Crate fan? <laughs> It's never been a secret. I've been singing their praises for over a year now. What, two years I think it's been. I absolutely love the company, love what they stand for. As a matter of fact, recently I had a one-on-one -on -one, uh, Zoom call with Rob, who owns the company. The owner himself wants to hear from us to find out what we think about certain things. And in this case, it was about Yarn Rush. And remember I did that review and I was just not singing the praises of Yarn Rush? <laughs> They recognized that it had issues, and so they were calling people and letting us weigh in on what we think it should be or how it could be improved. So I got to say my piece, which was awesome. And Rob really listens. I mean, he's 100% he's, he's invested in this. And coming to this with no yarn background at all, he surrounded himself with the people who do know the right things to make the right choices and you can't ask for better leadership than that. So Yarn Rush is undergoing some changes so as that begins to reveal itself I will let you know what that's all about. But in the meantime if you are a Knit Crate subscriber be sure to go into your account and make those adjustments as to how you would like to receive your stuff and pick your colors because you know you can do that as well. If you are not a Knit, Knit Crate subscriber and would like to be then there is a discount code in the description box below. You click a little link put in the code and poof 20% off your first box. I am going to, I, I love this company so much that I'm saying I don't care if you use my code or not. If you want to go to your favorite YouTuber and choose their code, do it. My point is don't pay full price on something when you don't have to. So everybody's got a code that they can share with you. All the influencers do. So pick your favorite, buy it that way. I'm all about saving some money. Oh, it's been a while since we've done a car vlog. Dollar Tree. Now I live in an area where there is a million Dollar Trees. However, I have yet to find one that I like. Uh, back in Mississippi and in Georgia, my Dollar Trees were awesome. And here I, I, I just don't like them. They're small and they're dirty. So I'm going to a newer area today. It's kind of where we go to Costco. Um, so we'll see. 
down there. You're actually even with the windshield. So if I wanted to look at you like I'm looking at you right now, my eyes are only going a very small amount. Watch, I'll show you. So here I'm looking straight ahead out the windshield. Here I'm looking out the far side of my windshield. Here I'm looking up at my mirror, my, my rear view mirror, and here I'm looking at you. So you can see it's pretty much all the same. As a matter of fact, it's even safer than having someone in the car beside you. Because if you were to look at that person while you were talking to them, you would have to turn all the way like that. So see, looking at you, I don't have to do that. And as a matter of fact, do I really even need to look at the camera anyway? Probably not. Well, it was okay. It was cleaner. But it's just like they're missing so much of the normal stuff that needs to be in a Dollar Tree. And I can't even seem to find any of these new items that people are claiming that they're seeing, that they're getting, um, you know, in their Dollar Tree. It's just not around. I think that's the fourth one I've been to. <laughs> so it's really not worth me chasing all over everywhere trying to find what I want. So. I don't know. Let's go home and I'll show you what I did find at a store called At Home. Now it's the next day. I got completely sidetracked yesterday with some things I had to do. So I am now showing you the Dollar Tree haul and the At Home store haul. But this is my disappointing haul from the Dollar Tree. I had plans to do specific crafts and so I'm well aware that I may not be able to find exactly what I've seen other YouTubers share. But I get there and it's like nothing that I went there for I actually found. So it's very disheartening. And, and I've been to several Dollar Trees. All right, so what did I get? Well, some staples. I always buy super glue in these single use tubes uh, from Dollar Tree. I have found that whenever I buy super glue, it clogs up in the top and so y you waste it. So the smallest amount you can buy <laughs> is really the best, and Dollar Tree sells those. So I bought this one which is the regular kind and this one is a gel um, aren't they both kind of gel I guess this was liquidy and then this was a gel I don't know but whatever so I bought two packages of each of those and then I bought some of these cute little silver spoons that I'm sure you've seen in there before they actually look like real spoons if you look at them from far away but they're just plastic these are handy for when you're serving hors d'oeuvres that you need a little spoon or something like that but also if you're going to do something like a sugar scrub for a gift for the holidays so I grabbed them while I saw them and now we have the fence in the backyard so what my thought process was for Christmas decorations hanging wreaths all along the side of the fence on the outside so the golfers can see that when they're playing golf. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do on the patio back there but that's my plan for the fence. So I got some of this plastic mesh ribbon and I'm sure you've seen that in the Dollar Tree. It's always there year round whether it's in Christmas colors or spring Eastery colors or something like that. So I went and picked up a bunch of that because that's just out in the open. Plastic would be the best bet. And then, lo and behold, I found some yarn. And I had to try it out. I just bought two of them. So let me tell you what this is. It's called Just Yarn. It's worsted weight, and it's actually by Premier Yarns. And we know that that is a big box store company. Of course, it's 100% acrylic. It's 131 yards, or 120 meters. It's 2.11 ounces, 60 grams. And I have to say, it feels awesome. I liked it. I thought it would be great, but I, I got a nice blue color for us to try and see how that was good. They had different colors. I'll insert a picture so you can see. It reminded me of fall colors in my head. I'm ready to move forward into Christmas or, or in this case, something more generic for tutorials or something like that. So, um, so there's that. That's all I got from Dollar Tree. And then I went in this home goods type store called At Home. And I got some, I got two of these to actually go in this big piece of furniture by my dining room, in my dining room. This looks a lot like my dining room table on a small scale. And then I bought a couple of these, which will go in the living room down under this table to hide my knitting stuff or crochet or whatever project that I've got going on. And then on the other one, 
just the way the plugs are set up and everything, I think what I'm going to do is actually cut a hole in the back of it so that I can put plugs in and are those uh, surge protector type things, multi-plug type things, run the cord out and then everything is contained and hidden in here. It can go around and in instead of laying on the floor the way I uh, have it right now, which drives me crazy, especially when I want to run the little scooter vacuum, you know, the um, Roomba type thing that I have. I have to always remember to pick up all those cords off the floor and this way they will be contained and hidden. At least that's my plan, we'll see. Now, you know about Elf on the Shelf. Well, Elf on the Shelf does not come to our house anymore because everybody is grown. And it's kind of annoying because in my mind, kids should be in every home. <laughs> And since we don't have any, there's no grandkids or anything around here yet, we don't have a need for Elf on the Shelf. However, Santa did send me a helper. So who he sent me is somebody named Oscar. And Oscar is going to hang around all Christmas season and uh, do whatever elves do in the home of retired people. But we did run into a problem, and that is that Oscar's a single parent, and he needed child care. So I told him, look, bring your kids. I love children. Bring the kids. They can play while we're working, and it'd be great. So he did. So I want to introduce you to his children. They're twins. This is Olive, and this is Oliver. And so they're going to be hanging out with me all Christmas season. I have to say that I had every intention of having a real elegant Christmas in my new home because we were redoing a lot. We had to throw out some old good decorations and I thought, you know what? I can revamp. I can do anything I want to. And I have decided that elegant Christmas is not my style. Children's Christmas is. <laughs> I am all about that. So when I found these little guys, that's what sealed the deal. I tried to see if there were other versions of this guy. I could have like a whole collection of elves, but there wasn't. There was just this one, and it does seem to be a product that's made specifically for at home. But um, at least there was a little girl and a little boy, so I had two versions of these small ones. Now these are supposed to be mantle sitters, you know what I'm talking about. They're weighted here on the bottom, and then they have these wiggly button legs like this which are absolutely adorable and there are plenty of patterns out there for shelf center self shelf sitters or mantle sitters whatever you want to call these so we could actually find something cute to make I'm not sure but we can we can look for that I do have this pattern for Santa gonk which I think is so cute. And I can't tell you if it's a paid for pattern or not. I don't remember. I'll have to look that up. But I did make his little body. I just haven't made his little outfits. Hopefully, this is somewhere on my list to get done here. Now, I had every intention of making this video the one about Christmas gifts. And I mentioned it at the end of the last video. And several people had written down below, oh, I'm making this and I'm making that and blah, 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 blah. Well, that's wonderful and you must be new to my channel, so I appreciate you sharing that with me. However, those of you who have been with me for a really long time know that I don't have anybody in my life that would appreciate a hand knit or hand crocheted scarf or hat or what have you. Unless they show a specific interest in something, then generally that's just not something that goes on their, on their list. But what we do glean from one another through my channel are good ideas for gifts that are all around. For example, this thing right here that is ancient, this is an electric mug warmer and they've been around for ages i have one of these in every room my children all have these in their houses and it's just essential as far as i'm concerned for keeping a hot drink the right temperature it doesn't keep it scalding hot like it's freshly brewed but it doesn't let it get cold it's perfect perfect drinking drinking temperature and you can get these now in all different kinds of styles as a matter of fact i have just recently ordered myself some new ones i have one downstairs that's literally broken off 
and it still works like a charm. But um, these are the Mr. Coffee brand, but you have some that can plug into a USB port or uh, really flat, sleek ones that look so nice, stainless steel, upgraded ones. I just have black and white right now, but I am ordering some new ones for myself. So be thinking of some good gifts that can be shared uh, with one another that we could get for the in-laws or the neighbors or things like that because that's an excellent resource. You and I are not next door neighbors. We're not going to be exchanging gifts with the same people. So coming up with really good ideas is helpful to each other. So we're in this together. <laughs> Let's share. So we'll be talking about that next week. But I do need to throw out that I do have a section prepared that are gifts for knitters and crocheters, uh, maybe crafters that are thrown in there. So we can't, we can't forget ourselves because what happens? Your husband is inevitably going to say to you, gosh, what do you want for Christmas? <laughs> So you might have a few ideas that you'd want to share. And it could be a Knit Crate subscription, but there's also some other unique things that I want to bring up and show you for that as well. So be thinking, because we're going to share some of these with one another in the description box below. But not yet, not on this video. Be thinking for the next video, and I'll be filming that soon. We're going to put out a lot more videos here in this holiday season because there's so much more to talk about. So we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. This is what we like to come into to see what Tucker's been up to on a Sunday morning. Oh, the door must be open in the back. I smell bacon. Ah, there's the bacon cooker now.